Hi, everyone. I decided to come out with something a little bit fun today. Uh, and basically, I'm just curious how other searchers think. What are your problem solving capabilities? You know, are you a logical thinker? And one of the things that caused me to come up with this idea is that, as many of you know, I've been a software engineer for over 35 years. I programmed from back on the 8 bit computers, 16 bit computers, and of course, to the latest computers today, um, back since the late 70s. And when we used to interview programmers back in the day, we would always ask them logical questions because we weren't necessarily concerned with how well did they know a specific programming language like C or assembly language or even basic, whatever, because we know a good programmer is going to have to know how to adapt to any programming language. So it's really important that you understand the concepts and the theory behind the scenes are much more important than knowing you know, how to use a certain compile. And we didn't ask them questions that we knew they probably researched before they came. Uh, for example, how would you do a quick sort or how do you make a link list or what have you? Those are too easy to solve. So when we did the interview, we would obviously remove any electronic devices. They couldn't use any calculators or anything like that. They, of course, didn't have access to the internet. And yeah, we did have the internet even in the 70s. We didn't have the World Wide Web. But we had the internet. But we wouldn't allow them any access because the whole point is we want to see how you think. We would usually sit in there while they were answering this question, too. And we would give them paper if they needed it or a pencil. And, and we want to see how they think. That's the point. That's the reason behind the pencil and the paper. Because if somebody was going to write stuff down, we want to see by looking at what they wrote, how their thought process is. Because that'll give you a better understanding of the person. And incidentally, it's a lot more difficult now. Like if you're new to programming and you want to go let's say google and get interviewed there they're going to do things a lot more difficult than what i'm going to show you here and they're trying to see how you think on the spot so i thought it would be interesting to put this out there for the searchers now a lot of you that are programmers probably already seen this this is like the simplest of the simple um, next week i'm going to come out with one that's going to be much harder that i don't think most of you are going to be able to solve and matter of fact, even after I tell you the answer, you're not going to believe me and you're going to go and research it anyway. But I'm going to start out with something really, really simple. So assume that you have A and B. Okay, Those are variables. They're labeled A and B. And each of them are capable of holding any integer, any size you want. There's no limit to them. So let's say that A is currently holding a value of 100 and B is holding a value of 55. They could be any two values. It, it don't matter, right? How would you swap the two without using a third variable? In other words, a naive approach would be to use a third variable. You can have C equals A, and then A equals B, and then B equals C. So by the time you get after the B equals C, you've now swapped, and A is going to be 55, and B is going to be 100. But I want you to be able to swap A and B without doing it this way. You can't use a third variable. So go ahead and, and pause this and, and try to think. And don't cheat, because, I mean, yeah, you can find the answer on the Internet. But what, what's the point of even watching this video then? I'm just curious if you're able to do it. So go ahead, pause it, think about it for a while, and then I'm going to show you the answer. Okay, so here's the answer down here. This is exactly how you can swap those uh, variables without using a third variable. Basically, you just take A, A equals A plus B, and then B equals A minus B, and then A equals A minus B. And if you do that, you'll find out that at the end, A is going to be equal to 55, and B is going to be equal to 100. So I've done it without using a third variable. Now, to be fair, when, they, when we gave this question to programmers, we didn't do it exactly like this. We would, we would actually word it as, you know, you have a computer, and the computer only has two memory addresses, okay? And it doesn't have a swap command, okay? All it has is addition, subtraction, and you can load A, and you can load B, or you can store A and store B. There's no more than two memory locations. So how are you going to swap them? And, of course, the reason why I said that they're capable of holding any size integer is because, obviously, computers, you know, if if you were limited to a byte, you can only have the value up to 255. So 
you know, 200 plus 200 would exceed the value. Um, the same thing with 16 bit would be 65,536 and so on and so forth. So I said that they're unlimited because there, there are ways that you could still do that, but I'm not going to get into that here because that would be far too involved, but it is possible to, uh, to do it on a machine where you can also take factor in the overflow. Okay. But that wasn't the point of this. So anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that next week. It's going to be a lot more difficult when I put the one out there. I'm, I'm trust me, you're, you're not even going to believe the solution. I know that that most of you are probably not going to get it, but it's also, like I said, these are interesting interview questions that, that people, and don't just think this is for programmers. A lot of times these days, since there's so many people applying for the same jobs, they want to see what kind of thinker you are, and it'll help determine whether or not they're going to hire you in some cases, especially if math is in any way involved, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great weekend. Peace.